Each policy debate consists of two teams, the affirmative on the left and the negative on the right. And of course, a lectern. Uh, no, that's a cistern. Yeah, there you go. Of course, the last piece is you, the judge. At your desk, you will have in front of you two documents, the flow sheet and the ballot. The flow sheet will help you follow, or flow, the arguments as they are presented during each of the speeches. The ballot we will cover later. Before the debate begins, the four debaters will introduce themselves, giving their first names. Take this opportunity to double-check the names on your ballot to ensure that the correct teams are present. Once everyone is ready, the first affirmative speaker will approach the lectern to give the first affirmative constructive speech, or the 1AC. This is the first of four constructive speeches, each of which will last eight minutes. During this speech, the affirmative must present a topical prima facie case, meaning their case must be within the intent of the resolution, while addressing all three stock issues of significance, inherency, and solvency. The flow of the 1AC may look something like this. Definitions, harms, plan, and advantages. Remember, you need not try to write everything that is said, rather only enough to help you recall the most important points made during the speech. At the conclusion of the 1AC, the speaker will remain at the lectern and the second negative speaker will cross-examine them. Cross-examination provides the opposition an opportunity to investigate, clarify, interrogate, and question the speaker. Cross-examination occurs at the conclusion of each constructive speech and lasts three minutes. Once cross-examination is over, we move on to the first negative constructive speech. At this point, the negative team may choose to take prep time to prepare for their speech. Both teams are permitted to work during the prep time, but it is always charged to the team that is speaking next. Once prep time is completed, the first negative speaker will approach the lectern and begin the 1NC. Here is where your work begins in earnest. Ideally, the sections of the negative constructive speech will be well organized and signpost, but even if it's not, your job will be to track the flow of the arguments on the flow sheet, connecting the points made throughout the speeches and taking notes of those arguments that are not addressed or dropped. The constructive speeches will all continue in the same manner until you reach the end of the constructive phase of the debate. Take note that since the constructive phase is now over, no new arguments may be introduced. New evidence can be submitted, but no new arguments. Now begins the rebuttal phase. It starts with the first negative rebuttal, or the 1NR. Also, notice that there are two negative speeches back to back. This is commonly referred to as the negative block. The rebuttal speeches are shorter, only lasting five minutes. The final speech, the 2AR, is given by the second affirmative speaker. The last part of the debate round is the oral critique, where you, the judge, have the option to give the debaters feedback. This final phase can last up to 10 minutes and will be timed by the debaters. Please remember two things. First, do not reveal your decision on who won the round. Second, the oral critique is a presentation, not a conversation. Please refrain from asking questions. The students have been instructed to neither ask nor answer questions during this time. With the conclusion of the oral critique, the debate round is over. Now is your opportunity to complete the review of the round. Here is where your ballot comes in. The ballot contains three areas, speaker points, debate decision, and ethics violations. In the speaker points area, each of the four debaters will be evaluated in the areas of argumentation, communication, cross-examination, justification, and organization. Please total the rows for each debater, then, based on these totals, assign a rank to each debater, being sure to break any ties. Next is the debate decision. Here you will decide the four stock issues and mark the winner in each. After deciding the stock issues, fill in the winner of the debate round. Please remember to refrain from using personal preference or prior knowledge to assign a winner. The decision should be based upon only what was said during the debate round. A double loss is assigned if the winner of the round commits an ethics violation that warrants disqualification. In this case, the ethics violation section should be filled out describing the unethical action. Help will be provided at ballot return for anyone needing assistance or clarification while filling out their ballot. 
We thank you in advance for your effort. Without you, this tournament would not be possible. Your assistance is priceless. Thank you for helping us in our effort to develop the Christian character and life skills our children need.